So I'm just gonna leave 6.1.1 for you guys to do at some work, right? Uh, define the term molar mass. I'm just gonna jump straight uh, to 6.1.2. So 6.1.2 is saying that uh, the composition of glycerin is as follows. We have 39.13% carbon, 8.7% hydrogen, and 52.17% oxygen. And the question itself is saying that let's determine the empirical formula of glycerin show all your calculations so what does these percentages tell us they tell us that basically if we had 100 grams of glycerin then 39.13 grams would be carbon 8.7 grams would be hydrogen 52.17 grams would be oxygen that's if we had 100 grams of glycerin but you know that it's easier to work with 100 than any other number right so let's just go ahead and assume that we had 100 grams of glycerin now the question is if we had 100 grams of glycerin how many number of moles of carbon are we gonna have of hydrogen of oxygen that's exactly what we are going to determine right so we're gonna say that for carbon uh, the number of moles is equals to the mass divided by the molar mass we're saying that for 100 grams of glycerin 39.13 grams will be carbon right so the mass will be 39.13 divided by the molar mass what is the molar mass of carbon we know that it is 12 right which is 3.27500 moles right now we can go to the number of moles of hydrogen uh, so the number of moles of hydrogen we're gonna have uh, the number of moles being equal to the mass divided by the molar mass so we're gonna have 8.7 divided by 1 right uh, which is just equals to 8.7 moles and then if we move to oxygen we're gonna have the number of moles being equal to the mass divided by the molar mass so we're gonna have 52.17 divided by 16 right and if you put that in your calculator you will get 3.26 so now uh, we have c carbon right and the number of moles is 3.2750 and then we have hydrogen with 8.7 and then we have oxygen with 3.26 so we, we take the smallest number and we divide every number with that right so if we divide 3.27 with 3.26 we're just going to basically uh, get one right and then if we divide uh, 8.7 with 3.26 we're going to get 2.67 and then oxygen you just divide in 3.26 by 3.26 uh, we're gonna get um, one right now you can see here that uh, we have a decimal number right so we have to multiply with the lowest possible number such that we get a whole number right if you multiply by one you just get that number and then if we multiply by two we're still going to get uh, a decimal number but then if we multiply by three we're gonna get a whole number we're gonna have c3 h um h8 and o3 and this is this will be our empirical formula uh, for glycerin so that's how we essentially solve this type of problems so the next question is 6.1.3 so we have uh 6.1.3 uh there's a bit of thinking uh, that we are required to do in this question right it's not really that simple although the mark allocated is only one so let's see what's happening here uh, the question is saying that let's write down uh the value of x in the equation above if the molecular formula of glycerin is C3H8O3, right? C3H8O3. So we have, uh, so instead of glycerin here, let's replace it with uh, C3H8O3, right? So I'm just going to remove uh, glycerin there and put uh, C3H8O3. If you look in this equation here, uh, you will realize that uh, here we have x multiplied by CO2, right? And then here we have a we have glycerin, right? If we find a number that is balancing glycerin, then it will be easy to find x, right? So this is how we're gonna do it. Uh, look at uh, H2O here. We have 16 
H2O, right? So now at this point, we know that on the right hand side, uh, we have 32 hydrogens, right? And then on the left hand side, we only have eight from glycerin, right? So to go from eight to 32, which number do we have to multiply with? We have to multiply with the number four, right? So now we know here that uh, glycerin is being multiplied uh, by four. And that leaves us with four multiplied by three carbons, which will be equals to 12 carbons, right? So on the left hand side, we have 12 carbons. Now let's go ahead and look at the right hand side and see what we have. Here, we have seven carbons already, right? So on the right hand side, we have seven carbons. Where are the remaining five carbons gonna come from? They're going to come from the balancing coefficient of CO2, right? So that number there is supposed to be equal to five. So 6.1.3, we can say uh, beyond reasonable doubt that X is equal to is equal to five, right? Uh, as you can see, it's not really straightforward. You have to uh, do a bit of thinking here, but the marker location is one. Now, 6.1.4, 6.1.4, let's calculate the mass of MN2O3 that can be prepared if 18 grams of KMNO4 reacts with excess uh, glycerin, right? So you know that in chemistry, uh, we move around using the number of moles, right? So with this, 18 grams we're going to find the number of moles right and from the number of moles we're going to use the balancing coefficient to find the number of moles of m and 2 or 3 and from there we're going to find the mass uh, so what are we saying we're saying that for k m n o 4 uh, we have the number of moles being equals to the mass uh, a small letter m right <clears throat> divided by the molar mass so what is the mass uh, the mass is given to us as 18, right? And then divided by, for the molar mass, we're going to have uh, 39 plus 55 plus 16 multiplied by 4, right? Which is equals to 0 0.1139 moles, right? So now we can use the balancing coefficients. We can say that uh, the number of moles of KMNO4 divided by the number of moles of um, MN2O3 will be equals to the balancing coefficients. So what's the balancing coefficient of KMNO4? Uh, that is 14 and MN203, that is seven, right? So if we go ahead and cross multiply here, we're gonna have the number of moles of MN203 being equals to uh, the number of moles of KMNO4 uh, multiplied by seven divided by 14, right? So we're gonna have uh, 0 0.1139 nine multiplied by one divided by uh, two basically right so 0 0.1139 uh, divided by two we're gonna have 0 0.057 right so now uh, we can go ahead and say that uh, the mass will be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass so what is the number of moles 0 0.057 uh, what is the molar mass the molar mass for mn we know that it is uh, 55 so we multiply that by 2 plus uh, the molar mass of oxygen that is 16 we multiply that by 3 and we shall get 9 grams